Now we are shifting to the volar interosseous muscles, the three small muscles that primarily arise volarly but insert similarly to the dorsal interosseous muscles. So if I were to ask you what is the function of the volar interosseous muscles other than adduction, would you say MP flexion and interphalangeal joint extension? I would not have, but indeed that is, in my view, very a very accurate statement. The volar interosseous muscles, there are three of them. There is only one belly. There are rarely two bellies. And they insert into the fingers that would bring three of the fingers toward the midline long or middle finger. For that reason, obviously, the long or middle finger does not have volar interosseous muscles. Now I say that and I would say usually does not have volar interosseous muscles. But the thing that is very curious is these are the only muscles that adduct our fingers and yet they do not insert into bone. What this suggests is that for the volar interosseous muscles to adduct, there must be some synergistic adduction, MP flexion, and IP joint extension. Because the muscles, by virtue of their insertion, are not able to isolate out just a deduction. Now, it is not uncommon, I will say, that there are some fibers that blend into the capsule and maybe insert into the bone. But remember, there is no pure, only bony insertion of these muscles. They bring the fingers toward the midline of the long or middle finger. If we look at the origins, now this may be confusing to you. You are looking at the dorsum of the hand, but we're pretending that we're looking through the bones on the volar aspect. The arrows that are drawn are above the bones and may create some confusion. So dorsal view, but these areas are, we're pretending that we can see through the bones and we're seeing these on the volar aspect of the bone. We maintain the dorsal view, there was, I felt less confusion for this. But look again at how very long these origins are. I mean, it's the full length of the bone. Because it's almost the full length of the bone, the fibers within the muscles themselves are fairly short, but there are lots of them. So we see here the same dorsal view. We see the muscle is coming from the volar aspect of the metacarpal and is inserting into the dorsal apparatus to bring each finger toward the midline. Volar interosseous muscles adductors. Here we've translated the muscle drawing into a schematic drawing and it's very obvious that a contraction of these three muscles would bring the fingers together. But how much of it would be moving the metacarpal phalangeal joint into adduction and how much of it would be influencing the function of the dorsal apparatus. And remember, that function is twofold. It's metacarpal phalangeal joint flexion and interphalangeal joint extension. Because of the insertion into the dorsal apparatus, the transverse and oblique fibers carry the power of the interosseous muscle. And we know from our previous presentation in this series how this influences digital motion. We see this drawing that shows clearly the influence into the dorsal apparatus. So just a reminder and review, there are commonly no dorsal interosseous muscles on the little finger and there are commonly no volar interosseous muscles on the long finger. The volar interosseous muscle 
on the radial aspect must share its power with the power of the lumbrical that is inserting more directly into the lateral band. But the power of the volar neurosis muscle is interconnected and it too provides some tension into the radial lateral band. Even though this is a volar interosseous muscle, it still is dorsal to the intervolar plate ligament. Now let's look at individual fingers and the influence of the volar interosseous muscles. Just to review again, this is very complex information I intentionally review and the feedback I've gotten is that that is useful. So where do all of the volar interosseous muscles insert? Well, they all insert into the dorsal apparatus. Index finger, ulnar aspect, the ulnar sided volar interosseous muscle would assist in interphalangeal joint extension and MP flexion. On the long finger, there are no volar interosseous muscles to illustrate because usually none exist. On the ring finger, on the radial aspect is a volar interosseous muscle which is responsible as the others for both adduction and NP flexion IP extension and we see the same on the little finger. One of the reasons the little finger is so problematic, there are many reasons, but in talking about the interosseous muscles, one of the reasons is there's only this volar interosseous muscle on the little finger. Remember, there are usually no dorsal interosseous muscles and the abductor digiti quinti on the ulnar border must share both a bony insertion for abduction as well as an insertion into the dorsal apparatus. So I would offer you that a general statement that I would consider true is there is not as much influence of power into the dorsal apparatus on the little finger as on the other fingers. We'll look at that momentarily and I think that will become somewhat clearer to you. So the three volar interosseous muscles all insert into the dorsal apparatus even though they are considered to be primary adductors. Mm -hmm.